all right guys hi everyone and welcome to the video in this video we are going to be talking about neural networks so if you have not watched my previous videos what we were doing is we i already taught you guys um so we made a machine learning model for diabetes but the but the problem was the code so if i just run this code if i just want to show you the code so it's pretty unorganized and we use just a linear classifier right in this in this video you can watch this video it's right there it's tutorial number five in tutorial number six we are gonna go for the dnn approach which is which will give a higher accuracy for about 78 percent we are going to organize the code in a better way so let's get started guys what are we waiting for all right so the first step so we are going to follow five steps basically only five steps and you can create your own neural network like a charm so let's get started so i'm gonna say oops what's that all right so i'm gonna say here all right this video would be long but it's of course definitely very informative so stay connected watch with me till the end all right so the first thing that we need to do is import all the modules so i need to say import tensorflow tensor tensorflow as tf i'm also going to show you an object oriented code as well so we are going to learn a lot so import pandas as pd because we need to uh, read the data set so we're going to import pandas we're going to say import matplotlib matplotlib.py plot as plt all right now what else do we need after doing matplot we need to import sklearn so from sklearn so here you can see just i'm pressing the tab button from sklearn dot model selection dot model model selection import uh, I M P O R T import train test split. All right, so we are done with that. Now we need to import some other models from SK Learn. So I'm gonna say from SK Learn import confusion matrix. I'm gonna explain you what is confusion matrix in a while. So stay connected. So I think it's from SK Learn dot matrix. So I'm gonna say dot matrix import. Uh, confusion matrix and we are do also gonna need classification report so we're gonna get a report of that all right so once that that is done um, we need to import um, uh, this module known as scikit plot so ski plot s s sorry it's it's sci then it's kit plot as sk plt so once you're do, done with that we need to say uh, we need to use matlab in our jupyter notebook so we're gonna say uh matplotlib matplotlib slash space in line so once you're done with all the libraries so you can see uh, i'm gonna paste it up and make sure to run this so here you can see all the libraries have been imported here so just gonna run that again quickly so once that is done what we need to do is the step number two we need to process the data remember so step two we will go very step by step so that we make sure we understand each and every step so let's not hurry and go uh, step by step all right so the step two is we're going to define a function that will do all the processing so define process data so i'm going to define a function which will process the data uh, and so the first thing that I need to do is I need to define my columns. So I already have written it. So now in order to not to waste time, I can go through it. I'll just explain you uh, in a short. All right. So what this function does is basically uh, these are the columns that I need to name in my data set. So uh, please watch my tutorial number one. That is this video so that the things become more clear to you. So we have these columns in that data set. So I'm going to rename that column. So first of all, I'm reading the data set. That is this Indian Pima, Indian Diabetes .csv. Header equals to zero. That means whatever columns are there by default, I want to skip that and I want to give my own column name. So I do that. So then I I'll select column to norm. That means the, the, the columns that I need to normalize or the column that are our feature map. So in case I'm using pregnancy, glucose, blood pressure, skin thickness, that is the triceps, insulin, BMI, and diabetes pedigree function. So these are the columns that I need to my neural network to learn up from this. So I'm going to say DF, then DF, the data frame, then I pass in the column. 
and I remember I apply a custom lambda function here. So basically I'm normalizing the data. So X minus X mean upon X max minus X mean. So I'm just trying to normalize the data. So then I create a variable known as X data, Y data. So here you can see. So the Y data is simply basically binary zeros and one. Then I do a train test split basically, uh, you know, to do a testing and then to test it out. So once that is done, remember to run this. So this will process your entire data. So let me run this. That's beautiful. Now we need to do is step three uh, is basically define our feature maps or feature columns. So I'm going to say, oops, what did I do? Okay. So I'm going to say step, step three, define feature map. Feature map is nothing but the columns that you, that you want your neural network to learn. So I've already written in a beautiful way in a, in a, in a function. So let me pull out, pull out that. So here you can see, uh, this is just a variable TF dot feature column and it's a numeric column. You remember, uh, pregnancy was a numeric column. It has numbers, right? So it's a numeric column. Similarly for the glucose, blood pressure, everything is in our numbers. Um, so we are, um, gonna say it's a numeric. So if you watch my video, uh, so here you can see those are the numbers, right? So make sure to watch that video again please. Uh, so I'm just right now doing the same thing, but I've def uh, defined all the columns here. Then I create a list of the, those entire columns that I define. I mean, those are these columns and the function will return the feature columns. All right, let's run this. Lovely. Now, what do we need to do guys after doing this? We need to define our input function, test function and um, stuff like that. So let's try to do that. So our feature column is done. Now we need to define a train function and a test function, right? So how do we define that? So let's look at this X train, X test, Y train, Y test, data process. This will call the data process. This will return the X train, X test, uh, and Y train, Y test. So basically this will perform all the normalization, train test split, and it will simply return the data. So once we have the data, we need to call, we need to create a feature column. So I call this function known as create feature column, which will create the, all the feature column. It will return a list of feature column. Then simply as usual, we did in the last video, we create an input function. So I say tf.estimator.input, pandas input, because I'm applying input by pandas. So X train, because my X is X train, Y is Y train, batch size of 50, number of epochs, thousand, shuffle equals to true. That's my training eval tf.estimator.input pandas function. So it's a pandas function because I'm doing pandas. I'm gonna supply x test, y test, batch norm equals to 50, number of epochs equals to one, shuffle equals to false. I don't need to shuffle because it's a testing. Then I just say predict input function. Uh, this will basically, this won't take the y value. Basically we'll just supply the x value and tell our neural network to predict the y value. So we're gonna test it out. So that's our three functions. Let, let me run that uh what what did i do wrong so data process is not defined okay i i did not run the function so pff, let me run that this one all right i think i've done that all right let me just remove this all right why is this it's a code why it is selecting as a markdown that's weird no worries we'll fix that out all right, now we will run this. What's happening? Name error data process is not defined. That's weird, I mean, I defined data process. Maybe let's, let me do this. All right, so I'm gonna copy from my function because I've already returned this in a nice way. So I'm gonna refer to that, paste it. I've already commented everything neatly so you can read it, everything. So let me make sure that I run it this. So I'm gonna run this, run this, run this. So, oops, yep, that's fine. So we, so far we created the input test and the eval function. So once we are done with that, now moving on to step three guys, let me repeat what we did. First of all, what, step number one, import the libraries, process the data. Step number two, then we process the data. Then step number three, we define the feature map and the feature column. So once you define the feature map and the feature column, we need to write the input function and the eval function and the predict function. So make sure to do that. Once you're done with that, now we need to move forward with the step number four. So step four is basically creating a model, right? So let me, uh, where is my mouse? All right, so here. So step uh, number four would be create a, model. All right. 
So, all right. Now, we need to create a model, so we are gonna create a DNN, that is a dense neural network. In my last video, this is this tutorial, I taught you to create a linear classifier. In this video, we are gonna make a dense neural network, which will give a better accuracy. So I'm gonna say DNN model equals to, and I'm gonna say tf.estimator. You can simply tap the tab button on your keyboard, it'll auto complete uh, the, the stuff for you. Then you can say DNN, and you have a DNN classifier. All right, this DNN classifier will take following parameters. So let me paste it. So this will take the hidden units, that is the number of neuron in first layer, second layer, feature columns, which is in the feature columns. Remember your feature columns are essentially these. All right, so n classes equal to two. Minimum, there has to be two classes. That is nothing but ones and zero. It's a binary classification. Activation function is equal to softmax because I'm using softmax because softmax uh, is usually used for enhancing the outputs. So I'm using softmax, dropout equals to none. I don't want to do dropout right now. We usually do dropout in order to uh, avoid overfitting that will be covered in a little later videos. Then we say optimize equal to tf.train.adam optimizer. We need to, we are using a kind of an optimizer to optimize the learning rate. So the, I have set my learning rate to 0 .001, 0 0.001. And the final step, step five, is basically training the model. So let me run this. So here you can see uh, it gives a message saying that your model has been created. And the last step, oops, I'm gonna say step five. So what are we gonna do, guys? We're gonna train, we're gonna test, test, we're gonna evaluate. All right, so let me do that for you. Uh, just gonna copy that from my Jupyter notebook that I've already created. So if I simply run this, so let me just walk you through this. So DNN model the train input function equals to input function step equals to 500. So our input function, remember guys, we created three functions: input, eval, and predict. So just applying that input function right now, you can see it's testing out. The final loss is 17.403, and uh, yep. Now we need to test our model. So I'm gonna say DNN model dot evaluate. So so DNN model dot evaluate, we created an eval function right here. If you remember guys, see eval function, we supplied X test, Y test. So just gonna run that real quick. And it's gonna evaluate and it's gonna give you the accuracy. Here you can see my accuracy is 75%, which is very good. I mean, of course it's not that good, but yeah, it's kind of good. All right, so once we are done with that, uh, I need to show you some couple of stuff. That is the analysis report. Uh, that is what is confusion matrix and stuff like that. So let me delete this. All right, let me bring up my notebook that I've already written and I've done on analysis on it. So let me run this real quick. All right, so after we do that, uh, let me show you something of analysis. What is a confusion matrix? Um, so the way to plot the confusion matrix, so let me tell you about a confusion matrix first. So confusion matrix tells you, um, so here, these are the number of, um, I would say, person that has um, a diabetes, so 125 plus 34. So zero means our neural network classified this as that the person, these, these, are, these many are the person who do not have diabetes and similarly here you can see this is the confusion so this is, these are the predicted label and these are the true label so it basically gives you uh, a margin i mean you you it tells you about how by how many how do i put this so it tells you basically like how many data set your neural network classified it correctly so to make this to to make uh, to explain you this in a little better way i have a better example to show you uh, which will make a little sense. Uh, so if I can find that, because I have a lot of, um, so I, I did an analysis on the wine data set. So if I can find that out, uh, I think it's already there on my blog. So I'm going to open my blog. I usually upload everything on my blog and GitHub. So so it's Samil Shah. Make sure to follow me so you can never miss a, miss a post from me. So if I go to my blog, so which one is this? This is the X-ray images that I did, which is gonna be covered in the next tutorials, upcoming videos. So hopefully, neural network keras for dog and cats. Uh, implementation of diabetes, five step. 
Yep, here is the thing, machine learning model for Wine data set. So I just wanna explain you the confusion matrix. So um, this makes completely sense. So guys, this uh, basically uh, the total number of uh, uh, the classification output was three, whether it can classify whether it's a red wine, white wine or something else, right? So 19, so total there are 19 types of, uh, you, you see class zero. And out of this 19, my neural network predicted all the 19 correctly. That makes sense, right? Now, similarly here in class one, total there are about, uh, if you see in class one, there are 22 of them and my neural network predicted 22, here you can see. So approximately like 100% accuracy, but here it did certain mistakes here. So here you observe in class two. So it, 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 it did not, was not able to identify one of them. So here you can see, that's nothing but a confusion matrix. It tells you by how many, by like how many data set your neural network missed. So, so I, I plotted that and um, this is the uh, accuracy chart which tells you the, about the accuracy. So it tells you all the information. So let me now teach you how to do that. So we did a DNN model or evaluate, right? Now we need to do a predict function. So we're gonna say prediction equals to list DNN model dot predict. And the input function is equal to predict function. Remember we created a, a three functions here. So here we have predict function, excuse me, sorry for that. So we, we created a function and so we, we are just passing it prediction equals to list DNN model dot predict input function equals to predict input fun function. Then what I am trying to do is basically this is a kind of a, 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 a dictionary stuff. So I'm trying to like extract data out of it. So I say for P in prediction, that means uh, if when I iterate over this, I only want to grab the predictions. I mean the actual values. So I grab all of that. Then I say classification report, Y test and the prediction. So whatever I was expecting, what was the true value? That means I wanted my network to predict that and prediction means what I actually got. So it's gonna uh, make a, a, make a report out of it and you can just print data. So if you do print data, you get a beautiful chart like this. And for the confusion matrix guys, I'm using a library. So simply to plot it, I can say conmat confusion matrix, which is a function by default. And you can pass in the two variables, y test and prediction and uh, skplt.matrix.plot confusion matrix. So I'm just gonna say y test and prediction. Then fig size is basically how big I want the figure. Title is confusion matrix, that's all. So that's it for this video. The entire code is there on my GitHub account. So here you see step by step, I'm showing you how to do that step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five. So make sure to check that out. I hope you will enjoy this tutorial and make sure to to give me a like on this video and also subscribe to my channel. Please make sure to subscribe to my blog as well. So because I, I usually upload a lot of articles on my blog first. Uh, so in the next video, we are going to learn about Keras and after that we are going to learn uh, how to make a simple neural, uh, how to make a, a convolution neural network to identify a cat and dog, then we are going to do on x-ray images. So basically using a chest x-rays, we are going to analyze whether a person has pneumonia or not. We are going to learn that. That's amazing. And later on, we'll also learn to identify faces. So soon you would be able to recognize faces using a convolution neural model. You will be using Keras. We will also learn how to load data set, how to convert an image, how do we resize, read the image as a NumPy array and stuff like that. So that's it for this video. Uh, let me stop this video. I don't want my videos to go uh, over 20 minutes. So that's it. If you have any questions, suggestions, list them in the comment section below. As usual, thank you for watching this video and um, see you guys in the next video. That is tutorial number seven, where we would be learning about Keras or or if not about Keras, then we'd be uh, doing still classic, more classification example on wine data set. Then we have uh, stock price analysis. Then we also have, um, uh, I think, I think California housing price prediction. So we're also gonna learn that. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope to you guys like my videos and content. So see you guys in the next time. By, by, by the way, the links of this article is also there in the description section below. Go to my GitHub, check out uh, this article is also there. Thank you.